We are under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of Baseball on the Show. Tonight, we've got a good matchup in store between the New York Mets and the Colorado Rockies. Stay tuned for Rockies Baseball next. Herman Marquez, the right-hander from Venezuela, gets the starting nod in this one. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, we're getting a chance to look at a guy that uh, he was a little bit up and down throughout points of his career. A career ERA just over four. When he's good, he can be really good. And when he's bad, well, let's just say he can be pretty bad at times. But it'll be interesting to see which one we see. He's a little bit of Jekyll and Hyde. Hopefully, he's going to be a little bit more Jekyll than Hyde in this one here today. And now a curveball that's low and in the dirt for a ball. It's two and one. 53 degrees here at game time as it's cooled off considerably since batting practice this afternoon. The 2 1. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Hilliard has to roam straight back, but he has it for the first out. Batting second, the third baseman, number six. So one away here with the bases empty, and that'll bring in Jeff McNeil. Lined into left center and that'll split the gap as it should be extra bases around first digging for two around second he's on his way to third the relay throw but he is in there with a triple and this is what good major league hitters do with a pitch on the outer half they don't try to do too much with it just square it up the best you can and drive it to the opposite gap by the time the outfielders react and get to it he's well on his way to third. Stepping in now, Pete Alonso. And he takes ball two, and it's two and one. Time for a look at our umpires in this one. Behind the plate is Patrick Johnson. You know, D-Roll, Patty Johnson, you know, decent strike zone, but isn't always super consistent. I think that's one of the things that irritates players and pitchers. Yeah, you're going to see a few glares, not only from the offensive guys, but maybe the guy on the mound as well. He needs to be a little bit more consistent. Full count now, three and two. We're seeing a good A-B here from the three-hole hitter. If he can work a walk or pick up a hit here, he's going to put that cleanup guy in a really good position to do some damage in this first inning. Fastball too high, ball four. I'm sure the manager is fine with that. He tried to entice him with that 3-2 pitch, but he didn't take the bait. First base was open, though, so he just needs to make a good pitch for a ground ball. Runners on the corners now with one man gone. And that'll bring up Robinson Cano. Pulled toward right center field. Center fielder giving chase. He gets there to make the catch, but this should bring home a run as the runner tags from third. And he will score on the sacrifice fly as he's in with our first tally of the ballgame. Got his job done there and made it look pretty simple. Got it into the outfield to bring home the first run of the game and pick up the RBI. Next up for New York, J.D. Davis. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. Alonzo is off of first with two away. And this ball runs away for ball two. Two and one. It's a high fly ball headed for the left field corner. If it stays fair, it's gone. Mm, definitely had the distance, but it winds up a foul ball. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. That misses, and it's going to set up a big pitch now. Three and two. Three, two, two out, runner on first. And 
and we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three and that will retire the side. So one run on one hit, no errors, and a runner left. We'll move on to the bottom half of inning number one. The Mets lead this one one to nothing. Jacob DeGrom gets the ball for the Mets in this one. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, when you look at the definition of rock solid for a starting pitcher, this is your kind of guy. Career ERA under three, just knows how to get it done. Controls the running game, limits the amount of damage, and more importantly, he knows how to win. And that's why it's going to be fun to watch him work in this one here today. In now, Trevor Story. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. On a good pitch there had him stretching to get out there and it's two and two now hey, he'd like to see a little bit more discipline than that you get a count in your favor he's swinging a pitch that bad not good neither guy willing to give in and the ad battle continue here's another two two a bouncer up the middle on oh, nonchalant at that one as it costs him and goes right by him In now, Charlie Blackman. Maybe too much break on the slider. Two and one. A runner at first with no outs here. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit more afraid of the guy on deck than the guy that's up right now. If I'm on the mound, I want this guy up right now. He's the guy that's got to beat me. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. That misses. So a single and a walk. And it's first and second with nobody out. Always tough to issue a free pass, but especially troublesome when you give up a single right before that to start the inning. We'll see if he can figure out a way to wiggle out of this. Here's Nolan Arenado in previous duels with DeGrom. He's got two hits in 20 at-bats. He's also gone down on strikes five times. First and second here with nobody out. And this is low, ball two. Two and one. A time to start making some quality pitches. He finds himself in a tough spot behind an account with guys on base. Almost got him to go around, but instead it's ball three. And the count will be full. Three two pitch. Gets him swinging. He struck him out. Wow that's the case right there where a pitcher knows this guy's up there and he's in swing Back mode. Four. That pitch wasn't even pitch. close to the strike zone and he still swung at it. to the plate now Daniel Murphy and that one got a piece of him as a manager you never really want to put a man on by a hit by pitch but you absolutely hate to have it happen when it loads the bases now the pitcher is looking a little shaky and the threat of a big inning is very real David Dahl to the plate now as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third Strike three called. My gracious, what a pitch with the bases loaded, and there are two away now. Flat out locked him up with the changeup right there. Usually you're trying for a swing and miss when you throw that pitch in a two-strike count, but clearly he wasn't looking for it, so it's a backwards K for him. 
So now to the plate, Ryan McMahon. This is on the ground to short. Is he going to get out of this? He is. They get the force at second base, and the inning is over. Rockies leave them loaded. They're on the short end of a one to nothing score. Digging in, Michael Conforto. He'll get us started in the top of the second. The 1-1. One, one. Two one pitches a fastball swung on and missed two and two. And this will be fouled away. Now a fastball inside and he works it back to a full count now. He walked a guy back in the first and now he's looking like he might hand out another free pass to the leadoff guy here. You can't be walking a guy in inning and think you're going to have any success. And he got him. Boy, that's the best pitch in baseball right there with two strikes. That elevated fastball. Every hitter thinks that, hey, they can do something with that. But most of the time, you get the result that you saw right there. A big swing and a miss and another strikeout. Blake now Wilson Ramos out in front there as this one's pulled off to the left side another try at 2 2 fastball is outside it's full now three and two and he misses here for ball four already two walks surrendered in his first couple of innings of work. We knew coming into this game that this guy has a tendency to give up a lot of free passes and history repeats itself as he's already given up two walks here. I'll tell you effectively wild is a pretty tough thing to be. And that'll bring in the former top prospect Ahmed Rosario first shot for him here with a runner at first now and one away. Now a double play ball here as this is on the ground to third one there. On to Murphy. It's a double play, and that ends the inning. Around the horn they go. Five to four to three to end the threat. More baseball on the show right after this. Last half of the second set to go, and next will be a speed threat in the form of outfielder Sam Hilliard. He's fallen behind now three and one call didn't go his way on two and one but it's important here on three and one to still make a quality pitch. You have to have the mindset that you're still the one in the driver's seat. Gets him to swing and miss there three and two. Hey that's the modern game right now north south elevate that high fastball and bury stuff in the dirt completely different from the east west we came up playing so it was a strikeout swinging Sam Hilliard becomes the first Dying out here in the bottom of the second Cody Walter. at the plate Tony Walters pulls this one into the air out into right field Conforto is there two down. In now for Colorado, Herman Marquez. Yes, he'll get his first opportunity in this one. And there's ball two now. Ani gets him to wave at that one. It's two and two. We're in the second. One nothing Mets early on. A swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes, and that will retire the side. One, two, three, go the Rockies. They trail this one, one to nothing. So 
here's the Mets pitcher Jacob DeGrom nine one and two do up. The one one is swung on and missed for strike number two. That's lifted the other way out to left. Waiting on it is Dahl. One out. The center fielder. Stepping nine. in and ready for another Brandon shot. Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo. He flew out in his last at bat. Bases are empty. One man out. Nimmo with an even count of two and two now. Hard hit ball to second. Throw to Murphy's in time, and there are two gone now. Now that number next for the Mets, Jeff McNeil. He scored after tripling in his first plate appearance. What's he got in store for us here? From the windup, the one-one pitch, and now a fastball, but he's able to hold off on it, and it's two and one now. Just off the inside part of the plate, it's three and one. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. Lifted down the line in left. And that will end up a foul ball. Now the three and two pitch. Here's a drive out toward the gap in left center. He takes the turn and heads for second. And he'll coast into second here with a two out double. Now this is the type of production they were expecting from this guy when he came to the majors a couple of years back. He looks really at ease at the plate and that relaxed swing is getting some really good results. Good example on that double there. Always great to see a young player blossom. Into the box. Pete Alonzo. Fastball well outside. Now a swing and a deep drive to left, and it ain't coming back. Over the bleachers and onto the concourse, a home run. It's a two-run shot to straightaway left, and the Mets have taken a three-to-nothing lead. Man, you could tell by the sound of that one off the bat that was going a long way. So bases are empty here with two gone and set to stand in the fine second baseman Robinson Cano. The 3-1. And Cano's able to lay off that time. He'll reach on the base on balls. Yeah, the pitching coach would hate to go to the bullpen this early in the game, but sometimes you have no choice. On the flip side, he might just get in his face a little bit out there, try to challenge him, wake him up from his funk. Either way, we'll see how it works. J.D. Davis the next to bat. 0 for 1 here in the early going. The 1-1. One, one. is off the catcher's glove as it rolls away and it's not in time as he's in well ahead of the throw and this is why you can't lose focus for a second when you're behind the plate any mistake a catcher makes has serious consequences this is a pass ball and the runner moves into scoring position he's set here's the 2-2 two -two. 
hit hard down the right field line. But a foul ball. Good eye to lay off the slider there, and he works it to full three and two here. For the guy on the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. Swing and a liner, but foul. The next 3-2. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Hilliard will get there, and he puts it away to retire the side. But the Mets do strike for two, both coming on this two-run home run. Bottom of the third coming up. It's 3-0 New York. With Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian with you as Trevor Story digs into the right side of the batter's box to kick off the inning. One one popped him up. Cano has a play. One down. The right field. Striding in for the Rockies, Charlie Blackman. He drew a walk his first time up. One out, nobody on. And it's fouled away. Turned on down the line, but this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Now the payoff pitch home. Fouled off. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to go a little bit further outside the zone. Three foul balls in a row. He wants to get a swing and a miss on this next pitch. Fouled away. He'll try it again. Three and two. And this misses for ball four. The second walk he surrendered here in the first three innings. Well, he gives up the walk, but that was a now really batter. good pitch. Might have been just out of the Nowhere. zone, but not by All much. A lot of guys would have gone fishing for that pitch, so sometimes the hitter just outlasts you. Standing in, Nolan Arenado. He was a strikeout victim in his first try. Yeah, he's got to put that one behind him, especially with runners in scoring position. Those punch outs will stick with you a little longer. Ready with the 1 1 pitch. Just a bit high with the fastball, but didn't get the call. Well, it's a pretty well-known fact that your batting average goes up as you get into more favorable hitters counts, and that's especially true when we're talking about this kind of hitter. Not a great spot to be in if you're the pitcher. And he misses again, ball four, and that's back-to-back -back guys now that have reached base via the base on ball. Here's Daniel Murphy now, and maybe a little extra motivation for him here after being hit by a pitch in his first at-bat. Yeah, Matty, you're not lying. Last time up, squared right in the back. Hopefully it doesn't stiffen up. I want to see if he can get through something right here. And that misses. Ball four, and he's going to need to settle down in a hurry now because he's in a peck of trouble. That's a big no-no. He obviously had to work carefully with two men on, but he did not want to walk him to load the bases. Now he's really got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he fares here. Stepping in, David Dahl. He got called out on strikes his last time through. Yeah, pretty deflating at bat right there, Matty. Not only for him, but the team as well. He's got to find a way to pull a trigger. Can't get caught guessing with runners in scoring position. So it was a swinging strike three. The David batter, Dahl batter, becomes four. out number Second two base this base. inning. Ryan. Nick Man. Standing in now, Ryan McMahon. 
Just got a piece of it at 98 as this is fouled away. Out in front as this is pulled foul into the seats. Bases are loaded here, two down. And he comes back to get him. So a great job pitching out of it with the bases loaded. Back to back strikeouts keep him out of danger. Mark, Dan, and I are back with more after this. Welcome back to Coors Field in Denver as we check in with Heidi Watney. Matt, during the break, I caught up with the Mets manager to discuss his thoughts on his club's offense so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've already worked out three walks, so he feels as though that kind of willingness to let the opposition work themselves into trouble will continue to result in good things for them on the scoreboard. All right, Heidi, thank you. At the plate, Michael Conforto comes into this at-bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. From the windup, the 1-1 one, one pitch. Who jumped the gun a bit on that swing, and he's down one and two. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate, and he'll have another shot at it here. As a pitcher right there, do not be surprised if he throws the same exact pitch. He was lucky to foul that one off. Uh, they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first out. That was a nasty-looking slider that time. Yeah, that was really well executed, Matt. A classic strikeout pitch. You think it's fastball middle in, then it starts bearing in on your back leg, and unless you hit it out front, there's nothing much you can do with that. Stepping in now, Wilson Ramos. Line to the right side. Leaps high as he makes the catch. Well done. Up next to the net, the shortstop, Ahmed Rosario. Into the box, Ahmed Rosario. Three runs, three hits, and no errors on the Mets' line score so far. In for a strike, and he jumps ahead one and two now. Ball two. Into the windup, here comes the 2-2 pitch. He chases out of the zone for strike three, and that's the third out of the inning. Mets go down one, two, three, but they lead it three nothing. Ready to go in the bottom of the fourth, and at the plate will be the speedy outfielder, Sam Hilliard. The two one. Down the first baseline, but this will be a foul ball as that evens things at two and two. Had to sit back change up and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Boy this guy has really good stuff so far on this one. How about seven K's and we're just in the middle innings of this one. If he continues this up this could be a real solid performance. Into the box now, Tony Walters. And he struck him out. Good pitch there as he registers his eighth punch out of the ball game. He's really on a roll right now, now on the mound. Back to back no strikeouts to wrap up Get the last off. inning. And now he started this frame with the same story. Four straight strikeouts in all. The 1 1. Swing and a liner. Foul. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he got another one here. He strikes out the side. He set down five in a row via the punch out, and the inning is over. Three up, three down for Colorado. Still down, three nothing.
New inning set to get underway, and next will be the pitcher, Jacob DeGrom. The one two. Two and two. Up. Arenado trying to get there. And the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. So here's Brandon Nimmo, third trip to the plate for him here tonight. 0 for 2 at this point. Now the 2 1 is taken, ball three. It's one thing to get hit around, but it's far worse when you're getting yourself into trouble by not throwing strikes. Every pitcher's been there, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating or unacceptable. Here's a bouncer foul to the left side, and the count will move ahead now to three and two. And this is swung on and missed, so it's two up, two down to start the fifth. Boy, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good now fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. At the plate now, Jeff McNeil. And here's a pitch swung on and missed. One and two now. Three runs, three hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. Now a swing and a ball headed for Murphy over there at first. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. So they're held in check here this half of the inning. Last half of the fifth coming up. The Mets lead it three to nothing. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. I talked with Rockies skipper Bud Black between innings, specifically about his club's offensive output to this point. And one thing he stressed to me was the need for them to have better at-bats when they've got runners on base. They've had their opportunities with runners in scoring position, but still have zero hits to show for it in those situations. He said repeatedly not coming through with a big hit can wear on you as a team, but in this sport, you have to dwell on the positives. He's confident they'll find a way to break through sooner or later. Thank you, Heidi. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. Looking for his 10th strikeout. Here's the pitch. And that misses ball four now. It's a leadoff walk to get the home half of the fifth underway. And I'm sure the manager is just fine with that. I mean, it's better to battle a slugger like that to the end and end up walking him than serving one up where he can really hurt you. And that'll bring in Charlie Blackman. A couple of walks for him thus far. Nobody out, runner on first. Good swing on a tough pitch, and he'll stick around to see another one. Line towards center field, and that'll get down for a base hit. Now batting, third baseman, Nolan Arenado. At the plate, Nolan Arenado. Way outside, nearly to the backstop, two and one. Hasn't seen a heater yet in this at bat. One might be coming right here. Two balls, two strikes to Nolan Arenado. I don't blame the batter for pulling the trigger right there. Those fastballs light up your eyes, and you can occasionally do damage with them, but he wasn't able to catch up with that one. Oh, a diving stop. There's one. On to first, and they turn the double play. Not what you expect from your three-hole hitter when the first two guys get on base. That's pretty deflating. But now we'll see if the cleanup guy can still pick up the runner at third.
Daniel Murphy steps in now. He's been hit by a pitch and walked in the game thus far. The 1-1. One, one. Men on third with two down. And he will strike him out. Ten now in the ball game, and the inning is over. Rockies strand one. They trail in this one three nothing. Carlos Estevez takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Number 54, Carlos Estevez. So here's Pete Alonzo. We all know this guy's a real good fastball hitter. We saw how far he could hit one. He got a fastball that he liked, and he turned that thing around, and it got out of here in a hurry. Hit hard to the right side. Foul. Now another one, two. Hey, that's a nice take by the batter right there, but that's a non-competitive off-speed pitch. Got to do better to at least entice a swing. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And a full count as that misses. It's 3-2 and two now. Action now in that Colorado pen as a southpaw has stood up to throw out there. Three two pitch tough pitch to lay off but he did and it's ball four so the leadoff hitters aboard to start the sixth. Well that was a slider in a three two count. It, it just didn't Second tempt eight. him enough to get a good swing. A good job of pitch yeah. recognition and knowing the strike zone to draw the free pass there. Here's Robbie Cano now. A runner at first with no outs here. And he struck him out. Well, at the plate, he kind of got bailed out on that previous pitch. I think it should have been a strike. Then he goes down looking, and you really can't feel too sorry for him. Not a lot of protecting with two strikes there. Into the box, J.D. Davis. Here's a shot to left field and deep. Look at this. And this ball is gone. No chance to make a play on that one. It's a two-run shot to straight away left. And the Mets have got it up to a 5-0 game now. Not every home run is exactly the same. That ball was absolutely destroyed. So now to the plate, Michael Conforto. Ground ball foul down the left side. Here now the 2-2. Gets him swinging. He struck him out. It's never easy to rebound after serving up a two-run shot, but that at bat was a good indication to me that he isn't letting it get to him. He went right after him for the strikeout. Standing in now, Wilson Ramos in the air to center field and deep back is the center fielder. Back he goes, but this is going to be a home run. So it's a solo shot to dead center as they pile on. It's now six to nothing. Another excellent swing right there. That's multiple home runs in the same inning. Watch yourself. You're missing over the heart of the plate.
Yancy Almonte gets the call to pitch here, and he'll try to sort this mess out. He's going to try to at least eat a couple of innings for his guys. Into the box now, Ahmed Rosario. Here's another one that's drilled. This one to left. He's around first, heading for two. Around second now and headed for third. And he is into third with a two-out triple. And that's the chance you take oh, when you lay so out for a ball like that. You make the play and you're a hero on the highlight shows. You miss it and you're picking yourself up and chasing after it. Late now, Jacob DeGrom hit in the air to straightaway center. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. So three runs on three hits, no errors, and a man left. The five, six, and seven slots do up in the bottom of inning number six. It's the Mets six, and the Rockies nothing. Ready once again, David Dahl. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ballgame. This one doesn't look good so far. Down by a boatload as we enter the middle innings. It's about time they get something going. And the last thing you want to do is fall behind where you have to score a bunch in the eighth and ninth inning. Just staying alive, putting together a really good at-bat here. And another foul ball. Ready with another 2 2. Here's a hard hit ball to the left side that'll be taken in out there at short. A sizzler that time, but the leadoff man is retired to begin the home sixth. Nick. Bases are empty, one man out. Oh, had him off stride that time, and it's one and two. Usually you see chases outside the zone on off-speed stuff like sliders, breaking balls, and change-ups. But to chase a fastball that far outside the zone tells me this hitter's not seeing it well at all. And he struck him out. And there's strikeout number 11 in the ball game. Wow, now that's one of the toughest pitches in baseball to hit, right? That yeah. good straight changeup, El Cambio. There's not much you can do with that. You're going off of that arm speed in the ball. It just doesn't get there. At the plate, Sam Hilliard. Just behind the fastball there, two strikes now. Hey, this guy's got to be pretty proud of what he's done so far. It's never easy to pitch on the road, but to have this kind of outing in a ballpark that is notoriously known as being hitter-friendly, it's been a treat to watch. Two and two now with two away, and the base is empty. And he's got another one here. Twelve punch-outs now in the ballgame, and that'll end the inning. One, two, three, go the Rockies. They won't make a dent in a six to nothing deficit. Seventh inning ready to roll and standing in the outfielder, Brandon Nimmo. To two and two now. Two and two. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first out. Now that Jeff good. McNeil will be the next to take a turn. He was a ground out victim last time up. One out, nobody on. Hit out towards second. 
throw to Murphy's in time, and there are two gone now. Up next, the power bat of Pete Alonzo. He homered back in the third inning in this one. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Hey. And a fastball called strike three, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Mets. They lead it 6 zip. Riding in once again, Tony Walters. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. Hit hard up the middle. And this is going to get on through into center, a leadoff hit. You know, D-Roll, there's been some great pitching in this one so far after that knock. That's only the third hit of the game, and we'll get late into this one. Yeah, they always say you got to tip your hat to the opposition sometimes. Well, I think this offense is tired of tipping its hat. they got to start to swing the bats a little bit better. That's their third knock of the game. I know it's late, but maybe they can get something going. Slider misses and he's in danger of losing him here three and one got to believe the pitcher's going to trust his defense right here look for something down in his zone to induce a ground ball double play the three one this is hit high in the air out toward left center giving chase his Nimmo he's not going to have a play on it and this might bring home the runner from first. And they've really got something going here. Runners at second and third to start the inning. Hey, this might be their best opportunity to at least get on the board. They've been struggling offensively, and they find themselves with two runners on board. Let's see if they can continue it. To the plate now, Trevor Story. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. Boy, the Rockies have been looking for that big hit all game long. They haven't been able to come through so far, but now would be the time to come through. All even now, two and two. From the belt, the pitch. Again, he sends it out of play. And this is swung on and missed. And boy, they took care of a key man there. One away. It's been a really rough day for this lineup. There's really no other way to say it. Not a lot of good scoring opportunities. And when they've had them, like right now, it's just been an uphill battle for them to make anything positive happen. Now here comes the Mets skipper on his way toward the mound. And he's going to motion for his bullpen here. That'll do it for the starter tonight. So he'll leave here with one out in the seventh as he now hopes the bullpen can go ahead and get him the W. Michael Walker is going to have his work cut out for him here. Two runners in scoring position, so he'll try to leave them right where they are. Walker. So now to the plate, Charlie Blackman. Swing, line, drive. That's going to be trouble. He's in at second safely as two runs come across to score away from the play. Not really much the pitcher can do about that one. He put the ball down in the zone where he wanted it, but it was just a solid piece of hitting. Goes down and gets it and pulls it into the corner for extra bases. Yeah, as you know, Dan, sometimes the hitter just wins. In now, Nolan Arenado. Now a swing and a miss, and he's behind one and two. Line to the right side. 
Leaps high as he makes the catch. Well done. Off the bat, that had soft base hit written all over it. But a nice snag there by the infielder on that soft liner. That could have been a potential base hit. So next, it'll be the number four batter for the Rockies, Daniel Murphy. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Yeah, but it was a good changeup, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher... And the run is in to score from second. It's now a 6-3 contest. That's a grind pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate, and this batter's able to fight and keep his hands inside this baseball and drive it for a knock. Impressive. Into the box, David Dahl. Two and one to David Dahl. He's not having his best outing in this one, and I think that curveball is part of the reason why. He couldn't get on top of that one, and that's not the first time that's happened. Waka comes set. 2 1 on its way. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Three runs already home here. Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. So three runs on four hits, no errors, and a man left on. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Mets six and the Rockies three. James Pazos has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 47. Jay Pazos. Here comes the second baseman, Robinson Cano. Here's the 1 1. And this is sliced hard down the left field line. And that finds the outfield grass for a base hit. Throw into second. Well, lefty on lefty, this is a tough matchup, but he stays in there, keeps that front shoulder closed, and just rips the pitch for a two bagger. Nice job of defying the odds there. J.D. Davis will stand in again as we flash you back to the middle innings here. This was a big blow, a two-run home run that really got his guys going. Ready with the 1-1 one -one pitch. Outside, 2-1. Pazos is among a dying breed, those lefty specialists whose roles are changing with the new rules around reliever usage. Now the 2 1. Drilled to the left side. And that's through into left, a base hit. And they'll get it in quickly. It's first and third now with nobody out. You never want to beat a pitcher that breaks a guy out of a slump, but this guy was too good. You knew it was a matter of time before he started barreling baseballs. That gives him a multi-hit game, and I'm sure he's feeling good about it. Now batting, Michael Conforto, and their runners at the corners now. one and a good swing there is this is deep down the line in right but this is going to wind up out of play with this one almost in books the story was clearly the long ball what are your thoughts on this offense fellas well Matty V I don't know what your thoughts are D world but boy when the weather starts to warm up and this one gets away so the lead runner holds on but the trailer will take second the catcher number 40 Ready for another shot now. Wilson Ramos comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. 
going back to that last AB, that was the express. That was an upper 90s fastball that he turned around. So I think with this guy, you might want to try to incorporate. And it looks as though the decision makers in the dugout will give him a free pass to first. So the bases are loaded here on the intentional walk. And the force play is now in order. Well, tough to say if that was their intention or not, but it's not the worst thing that could happen. A force at every base now, so there are a lot of ways to get out of this. Trying to pick things up where we left off, Ahmed Rosario. He's working on a one for three thus far. The bases are loaded here, one man out. And this is swung on and missed a huge out there as the bases will stay loaded with two away now. A lot of indecision there on that check swing, and that's something you see quite a lot on three and two. When the difference between striking out and drawing a walk can, can be an inch or two, it's pretty understandable why guys aren't always aggressive with their swings. Ball three, not close with the sinker that time. It often becomes harder to hit the zone when the pressure starts to heat up. In there, and he's taking him as far as he can go now. It's full three and two. Hey, this is a huge pitch right here. It would be demoralizing to watch this inning slip away. And a good battle continues as this ball's chopped foul at the plate, and the count remains three and two. Payoff pitch on its way. He spoils another one, and will do it again. Ready with the payoff pitch. Now a ball hit in the air, and this looks like it'll get him out of it. Hilliard is there as he makes the catch, and they'll tightrope out of danger as he strands the bases loaded. Mets leave them loaded as they're unable to add to their 6-3 to three lead. You're Dylan Vitensis is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom five. half of the eighth. Number 68, Dylan Vitensis. Bottom of the inning now, and Ryan McMahon digs into bat next. The 2 2. Popped him up. McNeil is there. He's got it one away. Now batting. Stepping up now, Sam Hilliard. Three at bats for him in this one, all ending with him going down on strikes. Bases are empty, one man out. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And that's going to wind up hooking just a bit foul, so a missed opportunity there. Look out. That one almost got away from him. Two and two now. Got to find a way to scratch at least one across. You do not want to take on the monster closing the game down three. Two and two count. Here it comes. Hit in the air to right center field. This ball is carrying well. Back it goes, and it is out of here. Solo shot to right center. And they cut the gap here. It's now six to four. Stepping in now, Tony Walters. And he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. And he fouls this one off.
This is on the ground over to first. Scooped up, and he'll step on first himself for the out. Josh Fuentes will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. Number eight. And this one's up around the eyes, two and one. I got two, one two out, down. nobody on. And a big swing and a miss here, two strikes. Sent out to straightaway center field. Waiting on it is Nimmo. And that's the third out. But the Rocks draw a bit closer thanks to the solo home run. Ninth inning straight ahead. It's now a 6-4 ball game. Jake McGee enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. And here's the former first round draft choice Brandon Nimmo struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Dahl's in pursuit. He gets there to make the play for the first out of the inning. So here's Jeff McNeil. He's tripled and doubled in four trips in the ball game. Grounder down the line at third. And that's a fair ball as this one gets by him at third. Hey, that's a nice job by the batter right there. Left-handed batter going the down the third baseline. You don't see that happen mm -hmm. too often. A lot of things oh, have to go ball. right. And with the third baseman playing off the line, oof, that's a nice job of hitting right there. Keith Alonzo will stride in, but first we take it back to the third as you take another look here at his two-run homer that had him rolling early on. Runners on first with one down. Nope. And he lays off this one down and in for ball two. Man, that's one of those. How could you not swing at that one? A good take there on that pitch. The 2-1. Will not nope. catch the zone, ball three. I love the approach out on the mound. Everything's down in the zone as it should be, but now you find yourself in a 3-1 count. Do you elevate a little bit more and get back in this zone, or do you just pitch around them? And a cold strike on the outside corner there. It's full now, 3-2. and two. Can't come out of his game plan right here. He knows he's a known sinker baller. I know it was a four-seamer right there, but get back to that two-seam. It's what his M.O. is. And he takes ball four again. And they clearly just don't want any part of him in this one. The batter, number 24, second baseman, Robinson. So it's a tight spot here. First and second, one man out. And that'll bring up Robinson Cano. Now the 1-1 one, one to Cano. We got two balls, one strike. Hey, lots of guys get too aggressive in a spot like this, but he's done a nice job of gaining some count leverage. Look for him to put the ball and play hard. Now the 2 1 pitch. First and second now, one man out. Swing and a miss, and they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. Stepping in, J.D. Davis. He went deep earlier, and he's two for four to this point. One and one, here it is. Fly ball out to straightaway right. 
And the two out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Two left for the Mets. They're up six to four. Edwin Diaz comes out of the bullpen to shut things down here in the ninth. Number 39, Edwin Diaz. Trevor Story steps in now. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. Hey, it's never easy scoring runs against a closer, but this lineup is setting up perfectly right now as the leadoff hitter leads off this inning. One and two. He got a swing and a miss on that last pitch, but that's not the location he wants to live in against a hitter of this quality. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. Two balls, two Outside strikes. and low that time. Now it's two balls and two strikes. Every ball club has that spark plug guy, and this is the guy right here. He usually ignites a lot of productive innings. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Line hard toward right center. And this is going to split the fairway and head out toward the rock pile for extra bases. And he's going to get to second now with nobody out. That's exactly what they needed. Down by two no runs. The leadoff no man puts himself in scoring position no with a tying run coming to plate. The temptation for the next batter is to swing for the fences and tie it up with one swing. But a base hit brings home a run and keeps momentum on your side. We'll see how he goes about it. Here's Charlie Blackman now. And it looks like this could be a critical at-bat in this one. Well, a glance at my scorebook shows they haven't been able to get him out yet. So this could be a fun at-bat to watch. No one out with a runner at second. takes ball four again and they clearly just don't want any part of him in this one the closer is supposed to slam the door in his opponent but he left the door wide open with a walk there we'll see if they can capitalize on it Garrett Hampson will be summoned now to be the pinch runner at the plate Nolan Arenado no hits in three tries so far he struck out once toward short and that's through into left a base hit Davis grabs it cleanly and that's going to bring in the run from second to make this a one run game now yeah one a day keeps the doctor away Dan that's especially and when it's a big one late in the game it doesn't matter at all you're just trying to get one knock a day find a couple barrels he having to catch his late Boy, I tell you what, you're talking about coming at a good time, too. You have a kind of a rough night, last A-B. You end up being able to do something positive, not only for yourself, but also helping the team out, too. And this one runs a little too far in, ball two. Hey, this isn't going to be an easy save. These guys are making it work for this one. fouled away good job to spoil that one away and he stays alive he's set here's the 2-2 swing and a miss as he couldn't connect on the two seamer and that's out number one and that'll bring up the speedy outfielder, David Dahl. His day at the plate hasn't amounted to much, 0 for 4, but this is a great opportunity to make amend. Well, if your team really needs you like they need it right here, you have to be able to put your personal struggles out of your mind. Right now is all that matters. Oh. 
hard hit ball to second. And that's through for a base hit. Hampson rounds third and is striding for home. And he's safe at the plate. We're all square at 6-6. Six, six. Boy, D. Rowe talked about the definition of clutch coming up in the ninth and delivering a game-tying RBI base hit. Yeah, what a huge at-bat right there. As a former offensive player, these are the moments you live for. Runners in scoring position, bottom in the ninth inning, and you're able to come through for the team. Let's see if they can continue on. Justin Wilson is called upon to get the final two outs of the ninth and send this one into extra innings. Here's Ryan McMahon now. He's gone hitless to this point. Not a great game up to this point, but none of that would matter if he could come through right here. A chance to be the hero. Now the three and two pitch. And he popped him up. Rosario ranges back and he has it for out number two. So digging in with a chance to win it here. Sam Hilliard as he'll look to get the ball into the outfield and bring home what would be the winning run from second base. Oh they have him looking awfully confused up there right now. It's one and two. winning runs at second with two down however and he'll strike out here yet again as it's been a ball game to forget thus far four strikeouts but disaster has already struck here in the bottom of inning number nine as two runs come across and they'll have to work a little longer to try and pull this one out on the road Garrett Hampson stays in the game after pinch hitting and he'll be patrolling right field Number one. Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area, so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Jairo Diaz seven. takes the mound Number as he'll be the first man to pitch here in extra yes. innings. Now at the plate, Michael Conforto. Been a really tough one on him. Already wearing the golden sombrero with four strikeouts. Hit sharply toward the right side. Ah, but that finds the first baseman's glove, and that's a the tough bat. first out. The catcher, Wilson Ramos. Ready now, Wilson Ramos. One for two in the ball game thus far. One out, nobody on. A ball and two strikes now. Diaz features an absolute power slider, and he uses it a lot. He throws it hard and gets a lot of late movement on that pitch. Yeah, Matt, and this is one of the reasons why this guy is so hard to square up and get the barrel of bat on. He throws hard, and this slider that he throws, it, it takes a sharp break down, and it's really hard to get the barrel on it. You'll see lots of swings and misses, and he can throw this pitch three, four times in a row and still make hitters look bad. A doubled up on breaking balls there outside. Now might be the time to bust that fastball in. The 2 2 is offered at and missed. He chased it for strike three. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand so they end up chasing when they're in protect mode into the box now Ahmed Rosario the one two offering looked like a slider that time but it's two and two swing and a little blooper to center in there a base hit so at the very least that two out base hit will prevent the pitcher spot from leading off the next inning. And if your mind wanders toward what's left on the bench there you get a look at what the Mets have remaining to choose from. 
Eduardo Nunez will be called upon here to hit with the game on the line. Number 12, Eduardo Nunez. Slow roller down the third baseline. And the throw is not going to be in time as he's able to reach base safely. You know, Giro as a pitcher, that could be so frustrating. You're taught to try to go out there and make quality pitches, and that was a really good pitch. And I would be willing to bet you he's surprised that that turned into an infield single. Yeah, at the end of the day, he's smiling. That hitter smiling, running down first base, knowing he's got an infield single right there. He has no business. He'll line out probably 15 times, but it won't even out. You take him when you can get him. Dump is there, and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Two left for the Mets. Score remains tied six apiece. Your Brad Brock please. comes on to start the now, home tenth, and he's just hoping to get this one into the eleventh inning. Brad Brock. Into the box now, Tony Walters. He comes into this appearance in the midst of a one for four day. Here now the 2-2 is looked at and the count moves full. When you're playing close games like this, base runners mean everything, so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. Good battle. Count remains full. The 3-2 one more time. Possibly an interesting development here. It's a leadoff walk to begin the frame in extra innings. Man, when the game is tied, the last thing you can afford to do is walk the leadoff hitter. Got to focus on getting that ground ball now. Standing in, Ian Desmond. The winning run is at first base. strike and that'll run it full and it looks now like a right hander's begun to get loose in the Mets bullpen possible winning run aboard here nobody out and that misses ball four so now the potential winning run moves into scoring position where a single could end this thing so a big spot here in stepping in Trevor Story as he'll look to get the ball into the outfield and bring home what would be the winning run from second base. And they'll go off speed here as this pitch misses. It's two and one. Brock, a native of the 49th state of Alaska. He was taken in the very late rounds during the 2008 draft. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar, but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was, my hat's off to him. Oh, not cheated on that one. It's two and two. A possible winning run on second. No one out. Now a swing and he pops him up. And I believe, yes, the umpire signaling for the infield fly rule. Now batting. So coming to the plate, Garrett Hampson. The winning run at second. However, the double play in order here. Now the one and two pitch. A little too much bite on the breaking ball that time as it's well off the outside. On the ground to second. Did he get his double play? The second for one. And the relay won't nearly be in time as he's there easily. And that'll bring in Nolan Arenado. A two-out hit and win it. Fastball or wild pitch would do the trick just as well. To two balls and two strikes now. 
It looked like he tried to get him to chase on that pitch there, one and two. A good idea, but I think now he has to challenge him a little bit. He doesn't want to get into a worse situation with the cleanup guy up next. The 2-2 pitch. Lined to the right side. That falls down, and in comes the winning run. And the Rockies are going to win it in walk-off style. Well, the way things unfolded, you kind of had a sense that this thing was going to end in dramatic fashion, and that's exactly what happened. A walk-off for the win? Wow. Well, the lineup was clicking for him in this contest, and the man you see there was a major contributor. For that, he's the top player of the game. Yeah, he came through with a multi-hit game, and more importantly, they were big hits. He was a key contributor to the outcome of this one. tight one seven to six the final score tonight the Rockies used a three run seventh to help propel them to the win Jairo Diaz gets the W on the mound so that's a wrap here tonight for Mark DeRosa Dan Pleszak and Heidi Watney this is Matt Vaskersian you've been watching MLB the show for more find us on Twitter at MLB the show the final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious Rockies Seven runs, 11 hits, no errors. They left 10 men on.